This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. I'm recording this episode today as a Facebook Live and also as a podcast episode for Entrepreneurs Get Visible, as I am very, very fresh and close to the whole process of writing your book and getting your book out there. So for those of you who don't know, I launched my first book, Get Visible, How to Have More Impact, Influence and Income. And that went live this time last week. So Tuesday night and then ready, it hit the charts Wednesday morning. So I am recording this on Wednesday, the 28th of November. So my book has now been live for just over a week. And I want to talk you through the actual book writing process. Now, those of you who don't know about my book, what I want you to know is that it hit number one across 11 categories on Amazon and is in the top 10 for nine others, which has kind of been an extreme launch. And as you'll find out through this book series, for the next four episodes, the solo episodes, I'm going to be talking about the book writing process and the publishing process. And today I'm talking about specifically the journey to writing a book, the whole process of getting your book written. So first of all, why did I want to write a book? What was that decision making process for me? So there were several layers to this. First of all, I knew that I had a story. I knew that I had something that I wanted to share with other people that would make a really, really big difference. So that was a big driver. I knew that this could have lots of impact on other people in the world. And that was probably the the biggest thing. The second thing was that for many, many, many years, I have wanted to become an author, but not just an author. I wanted to be a best selling author. I wanted to push myself out there, get more visible, become known for what I teach, become known as someone with something valid to say in the world. So there is an egotistical element to becoming an author. I wanted to have a book that just wasn't out there, that wasn't just sort of something as a a vanity metric, but that actually was having impact and positioned me as more of an authority that got me more visible, funnily enough. So they were some of the processes that were going on for me. I also knew I definitely wanted to have that kudos. I wanted to be sharing my message with people. I wanted people to know that I was an author. So this had to be something that worked for me. But chiefly behind it, I wanted it to have impact. And you can't affect more change for people if you're not out there on a global or international scale. So for me, in terms of writing the book, it's starting with the end in mind. Who is it for? How will it serve my business? So it's not just out there on its own. This is actually something that has a business function. And what is it for? Is this actually to give real content and value? Is it just a positioning piece, in which case it didn't have to have anything connected with my business? Or is this something I'm going to use for lead generation? And often books are used for lead generation by entrepreneurs. But I'd seen a few recently that had left me feeling a little bit disheartened from entrepreneurs and coaches who were in a very niche space. And I was excited to get my hands on their book. And when I read it, particularly if it was a Kindle book, actually, it was entirely lead generation. So instead of giving you the answers that you really need, the answers that you really want, it was just sending you almost on every chapter to a particular download, which would then put you into the system. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a very clever business model. But I I always left those books feeling a little bit dirty. That's the word I'm going to use. A little bit like I'd been um, let down because I had bought that content and I'd gone into that book in good faith, believing I was going to get value. So I knew that whatever I was putting out there, I didn't want it just to be lead generation, but that there would be some lead generation in it. In fact, in my book, there are three places where people can go and download something, but again, it's really of value to them. And of course, that then brings them into my mailing sequence. But I didn't start with thinking about that. I knew that I wanted to do content and value. Now, this book, I had known about five years ago that I wanted to write a book about what I had discovered in terms of mindset that affected my business success. But five years ago, I was in a very different space. My business was very, very different. And I started to write the book then. And the interesting thing was that I hadn't had all of the successes that have come as a result of all of the things that I have realized for myself and then implemented for myself. I was right at the start of that journey, but I'd had some major light bulb moments that I wanted to share with people. 
So when I started thinking about that book back then, I had all the same concepts that I'm talking about in the book, but I wasn't in the right place. I didn't want to write the book for that very small industry because I knew that I wanted to step away from that industry. I then launched Inspiring Mummy Club, my first online development business, and I started to write the book again, shaping the same story, the same content, but just for mums. And every time I went to write it, it just didn't feel right. It felt like I was limiting myself. And actually, I knew long term, I didn't want to label myself as someone who just helps mums and potentially just helps in mindfulness. That wasn't right for me. It didn't feel right. It wasn't a good fit. So I kept stalling on this book. I kept stalling, kept stalling. And then last October, I went to an event by Hay House Publishers, who are one of the leading personal development publishers in the world. And the reason I went is because they have a competition where everyone who attends that day gets an opportunity to take part in their competition. And actually, if you went in the UK, you not only got a chance to take part in the UK's competition, but in the US competition as well. And that was to win one, a publishing deal with Hay House, and two, which would be for the UK and the US, and two, the runner-up was going to get a £5,000 self-publishing deal through their self-publishing arm called Bilbao. I think that's how, Balbao. I don't know how you say it. We'll find out and put it in the show notes. Um, So it was a tremendous, tremendous offer. And I went to that event and one of the main speakers was Julia Cameron. And Julia Cameron wrote The Artist's Way and she's now in her mid 70s. But she wrote the book The Artist's Way, which was my first indoctrination into self-help and mindset back about probably about 22 years ago now while I was at drama school. And she was the big draw for me going to that event really. I kind of wanted this woman whose work had had such an influence on me and my life, I wanted to meet her. And one of the things she said, she she gave us lots of exercises that we did throughout the weekend. And one of the questions she posed was, what book do you most want to listen to? If there was a storyteller around the other side of the tree, what would you want to hear? If you were sat there one night wanting to hear a tale. And the things that I wrote were that I wanted to hear a tale of overcoming hardship. I wanted to hear raw, honest truth. I wanted to hear the challenges that someone had had in order to get on the journey that they wanted to be on. And I realised as I read that, that the things that I was scared about sharing about myself, the vulnerabilities that I was scared about sharing, were the very things that I most want to read. And so that kind of gave me permission to get my story out there and to share warts and all. Now, my book is very personal very, very personal. If any of you started reading it, I am very open about how I used to see the world. And that doesn't put me, my younger self, it doesn't put me in a good light. But I explain why I felt those things and why I saw the world that way. And I think it actually gives real insights into how we each choose and filter information that comes at us. But it was a decision, a real conscious decision that I wanted to be raw and vulnerable because that, as someone receiving a story, as someone on a journey of a story, that is what I most want to uncover because they're the books that really make me tick. So I sat in that room and they taught us everything we needed to know about writing a book proposal for the competition, but gave us that real understanding that the book proposal then could go to publishers. This is what traditional publishers want. And that even if we didn't go down the traditional publishing route, route, that the writing the whole book proposal would give our book the strongest foundation. And I'm not going to go into what should be in a book proposal. I did an episode, it was episode 20 on writing a book proposal, exactly what you need to consider, what that process looked like for me. And I think it would be really valuable for you to go and listen to that. So it's episode 20 of Entrepreneurs Get Visible. So the next thing I then had to think about was, will I self-publish or will I go down the traditional route of traditional publishing or will I do something in the middle by using a hybrid publisher? Now, again, I'm not going to go through that today. I'm going to be doing another episode for Entrepreneurs Get Visible, which will be released on a Thursday in the next few weeks. So you'll get to hear that then. But what happened chiefly was because I had this amazing event that I'd been at with a leading motivational figure who'd really impacted my life, essentially giving me the kick up the backside to get out on and do it. And I had a deadline then for the competition. And I left that room in October thinking, well, of course, I'm going to get this book done. It's sitting there just beneath the surface. It has been for a very long time. Let's just do it. But then life happened and life happened. And my book proposal, the deadline was May. 
And actually, I kept saying, I'm going to write my book, I'm going to write my book, I'm going to write my book. And I'd have these bursts for maybe a couple of weeks where I would be brilliant at getting up early and writing a chapter before I meditated, before I did any of the crazy journaling or anything that I do. And if you read my book, you'll know how important journaling is to me. My book was coming first. And then something would happen, something with the children or something with the school, or we had a lot of family health issues in February, just as my book was about halfway through. And I reached overwhelm combined with running my business. And I was taking part in a a very intense marketing mastermind as well at the time. Something had to go. So the thing that had to go was writing the book. And once you stop, it's hard to get back up, even though I knew that in 2019, I wanted my book to become a bestseller. So this deadline of May was looming. It was looming. It was looming. It was looming. I was so busy. In the end, I cancelled everything in my diary for two weeks to get this book done. I managed to move everybody around and I pretty much, I just knocked it all out as quick as I could to just get it done. And that was interesting then because I got the book proposal done. So this is just the book proposal at this point as well. I got that book proposal done and I get it got it sent off the night before the deadline for the competition. So then I waited for a while because I didn't want to write the book if I might potentially win a publishing deal because I knew that they would then be helping us with the process. But the whole book, this whole book proposal was about 50 pages long. So it was really intense. I knew exactly what was going into each chapter. I knew what was going to help people in each chapter. I knew where I was moving people. I knew what personal stories and anecdotes were going in there. It's just sitting below the surface. That's the level of planning that had gone into the book. So then at this point, I then discovered that I hadn't won. And I'm a very competitive person. So I had a little bit of a wobble as to that's not fair because I was convinced I was supposed to because my book's supposed to be big. So I didn't write anything for a little while. And I went to another event, which was held by Shah Wasmond, who came on to an episode a few weeks ago. So you can go and find her. I think it was episode 32, 33, episode 33. And at that event, there were speakers such as Lewis Howes from School of Greatness, Chris Ducker, who runs Youpreneur and who has got several books out, one of which is actually called Youpreneur, and Shah herself talking about their book processes. And what was interesting was that both Chris Ducker and Lewis Howes had both gone down they'd gone down each the traditional route and the self-publishing route. So it was really interesting to me to hear about the level of control that they wanted over the process. So that kind of got some, um, um, I guess, alarm bells kind of going. Maybe alarm bells is the wrong phrase. But that there were options here for me that didn't mean I had to wait around for somebody else to say yes to me. One of the things I'd understood, and I'll talk about this more in the publishing episode, was that if I was going down the traditional route, I would have to wait potentially another two years to get my book out there. And I knew I wanted this to position me and put my name on the map. So in terms of getting it out there then, I sat next to a lady at that event and she was launching her podcast. I was saying my book's so close, I just haven't actually written it yet. For the book proposal, I'd had to write three full chapters. My book was only 10 chapters long, so I had seven to go with the shape of it, the framework completely there. So at that point, we weren't buddies or anything like that, but every single morning we checked in with each other. And I managed to do that, I would say, for about three or four weeks. And then again, some family stuff happened and it kind of went all a bit wobbly. So again, I took two weeks out of my business to write the book. And what was interesting was that for some of the book, the content I'd actually done in blogs before, or I'd done podcast episodes on, or it had been part of some of my previous courses. So it was a question of bringing all those things together, which on the one hand, you would think would be easy because you've already written the content, except that you then have to bring it together so that it has a through line and it fits your story. So in many ways, that was actually slightly more challenging because in terms of editing it together in my own words, although it had all been my content, it then had to flow as part of the book. So in many ways, I think that actually hindered me in the process. So then finally, I got it finished. And I reckon I finished it the end of June, just before we were going to go on holiday. At this point, I was really hoping that I would be launching around the 24th of November, as that was my birthday. And I didn't want to have another birthday where I hadn't got this book out. Because by this point, it's five years since I first said I was going to be a published author. So at that point, I had fully decided I was self-publishing. I had had conversations with various people, but I'll talk more about those decision processes in the next episode, which will be next Thursday. So at this time, it was then a question of sending it off to someone to edit. And there were three levels of editing, which again, I'll go into another time. And then getting that book back. So the book that came back to me 
Actually, before it went off to the editors, I had a month where I sat on it. I sat on it because I knew that I wanted to read it and it be as clean and finished as possible before it went to the editor in terms of the flow of the journey, not necessarily grammatically, but all the content that I wanted to deliver and the story that I wanted to deliver was in there. So I left it for a month and I came back. And that's interesting because you're so close to it when you're writing, you don't necessarily see the whole piece. So again, there was quite a lot of work to do around it then before anyone else has seen it. So it then went for three levels of editing. I'll go into that in more detail another time. But when it came back to me, it was approximately 8,000 words lighter. And it was a very, very different product. It was exactly my words. Nothing was added to it, but much was taken away. Much that was repetitive or that didn't make sense or where I'd added in vernacular speech that, that didn't serve a purpose when it was on a page. So at that point, it was it's kind of scary because I knew that it was really, really close. But again, I was booked out with coaching clients and courses and things that I had to deliver. So even though I knew that this book was sitting there, my podcast, Entrepreneurs Get Visible, was being launched. And that launch was crazy. You know, this show got to number three in the UK and it got to number nine in business globally. So there was a lot of impact from having that amount of reach. And I had to sit on reading this draft because I didn't have the clear head or the time or the focus in order to be able to look at it properly. So I hope that this has been really interesting for you as part of that journey for getting my book written in the first place. It wasn't easy. I found it much more challenging to be consistent and to fall into routine. And I realised that, yes, I can get really well in flow first thing in the morning or last thing at night. But then I lose that momentum and I found that very, very difficult. So in the end, the thing that worked best for me was to block out time. And for future books, I'll be doing again a cross of both of those techniques. I will definitely do a little bit here and there, but I will really block out my diary with nothing else going on so I can just sit and do it. So the whole book process says then, in some ways, I only wrote it in June and it's out in November. In other ways, this has been brewing in me for five years. So this has been no quick win for me. But my God, it has been a win. So to put it in context, this week, my book has gone to number one in 11 categories, as I said, but it has outranked people in entrepreneurship, self-help and business categories such as Elon Musk. It has outranked Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. It has it has shot through the charts ahead of my mentor, Rob Moore, which is kind of exciting. It has just gone nuts. It's gone wild. And I'm going to talk much more about the launch process again in a few weeks on a Thursday. So you'll have to come back and find out a bit more about that. But I would love you to go and download my book if you can get it on Kindle. And it's also available on paperback now. And very, very soon, uh, we are releasing the audio book. We're just waiting for Audible to approve all the audio. And I'll talk about those processes as well at some point very soon. So if you haven't get, got a copy yet, it's called Get Visible, How to Have More Impact, Influence and Income. And you can get a copy in the show notes. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneurs Get Visible. To get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community, go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible.